Okay, so we're going to start looking at coordinate geometry of the circle, but the first thing to note is a quick recap. We know that linear functions can be written as y is equal to ax plus b, and remember that in coordinate geometry the line is kind of like y is equal to mx plus c, knowing that m is the slope and c is the y-intercept. So that's all from coordinate geometry the line. We know from quadratic equations that they look like y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where the highest power is 2, so that's what makes it a quadratic. With a linear, the highest power is 1. There's no 1 written there because we're just lazy in maths and we don't write it in. With a cubic, we know that it's y is equal to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And with exponentials, the power is the bit that is the variable or the unknown. We call this the base down here and the power is the bit that's unknown. What they look like, a line or a linear, there we have a linear, it could be positive, sloping upwards like that, negative, sloping downwards. If it's horizontal like this, it's just y is equal to 7 or y is equal to 3, a single number, whatever the y-intercept is. And if it's vertical, like this, we say it's x is equal to some number like 7, wherever it hits or crosses the x-axis. This has a slope of 0, so m is equal to 0 for the line, where the vertical, it's not m is equal to 0, the slope just literally doesn't exist. Okay, it just doesn't have a slope. With quadratics, we've seen before, we have the smiley face is positive, the frowny face is negative. With um, cubics, we have positives and we have negatives. Okay, so the cubic could either look like this, where if you imagine it goes starting from the start to the end, it looks like it's going upwards. Uh, start to the end, it's going downwards, so it's negative. Start to the end, it's positive. And start to the end is downwards, so it's negative. Uh, and similar idea with quadratic, with, or with the exponential. Start to the end, going upwards, so we have a positive exponential. And start to the end, it's going downwards, so it's a negative exponential. And that's relating to this number here, whether it's positive or negative. So we need to talk about the circle. If it has an x squared and a y squared, it is a circle. Okay, so jumping forwards a little bit, we're gonna look at, well, what do we need to define a line? To define a line, so to find the equation of a line, We need the slope and the point and the line. Or we need two points. And in that sort of scenario, if you have two points on the line, you would just find the slope between the two points and then use y minus y1 is equal to m by x minus x1. Or if we have, oops, have y-intercept uh, and slope. Remember the y-intercept is where it hits the y-axis we use y is equal to mx plus c, where c is the y-intercept. Okay, but with circles, to find the equation of a circle, we need the radius and the center of the circle. Okay, and if you go to page 
page 19 of your log tables. So we know page 18 is for coordinate geometry of the line, but page 19 is really for coordinate geometry of the circle. Okay, We're going to use the f all of this an awful lot. So if you were given a center HK and a radius OR, we would use this formula here. So an example of this then, so we're given, we call the center H and K and we call the radius OR. An example of that would be, find the equation of the circle with center 3 minus 1. So we're calling it H and K, whoops, and K, and OR for radius. And we are subbing that in to our equation. So make sure you write this equation out very carefully every time we're going to use it. So it's a matter of subbing in the 3 for the h, the minus 1 for the k, minus minus 1 is plus 1, and the 4 for the radius. You could not multiply out this bracket, not multiply out this bracket, and just multiply out the radius. So often answers are given like that, but it's more useful. So often it comes in this form, but we should multiply it out. Like it is definitely more useful to multiply it out. So some of you will find it easy to multiply out the brackets. Some of you will just need to take your time a little bit more. So do take your time in multiplying out the brackets. It's more important that you get it right than you do it quickly. Okay, so writing out the two brackets. X by X is X squared. X by minus 3 is minus 3X. Minus 3 by X is minus 3X. Minus by minus is plus 3 by 3 is 9. Plus y by y is y squared, y by 1 is 1y, plus another 1y, plus 1 is equal to 16. 1 by 1 is 1, which brings us down to minus 3x minus, minus 3x minus 3x minus 6x, plus y plus y is 2y. And then we always like to reorder it and write it as x squared plus y squared minus 6x plus 2y minus 16. So I have added 9, 1, and then and minus 6, not minus 16, and I have then subtracted 16 from both sides. So 9 and 1 is 10, but then when you subtract 16, you're going to get minus 6 there. And we like to leave it in this format like this, always with an x squared, then a y squared, then the x's, then the y's, and then the constants. So you're going to get used to recognizing something written out like that as the equation of a circle. Alternatively, they might give you the equation of a circle. Now, you can notice that this is not multiplied out. Well, that's fine. It doesn't matter that it's not multiplied out. If you were to compare straight from the log tables, this formula straight from the log tables, and we know the fact that the center is HK, it says it in the log tables, it says it here, given center HK, so that is the center HK and radius OR. So we know the center is hk, then you're matching minus h with minus 3, and you're matching minus k with 4, and we want to find hk, so you'd say h is equal to 3, k is equal to minus 4, and then consider the radius, or squared is equal to 36. What's or going to be? It's going to be plus or minus the square root of 36, but I wouldn't worry about the minus because a radius must be a positive distance. So it's only ever going to be plus six in this case. Okay, well, what if we weren't given it in the previous format? What if we were given it as if it was multiplied out? This is again where we're going to go to our log tables. So does it look like we have it in this format here? X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared is equal to R squared? No, not really. It more looks like this format. Given the equation x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy. So x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to 0. 
Okay? And we'll start doing matching these up in a second. But we know that the center is going to be minus g minus f. Just because it says if you're given it in this format, the center is going to be minus g minus f. And the radius is going to be the square root of g squared plus f squared minus c. So minus g minus f is the center. And we know the radius is going to be the square root of g squared plus f squared minus c. Okay, now our highlighter comes back out. 2g is going to be minus 2. What else do we know? 2f is equal to 4. And c is equal to minus 8. That's a terrible 8. A little bit better. And the blue. So we want to find what minus g is. Well, g is going to be minus 1. Minus g is going to be 1. f is going to be 2. Minus f is going to be minus 2. So the center is 1, 2. Sorry, 1, minus 2. Center. And what about the radius? Is equal to the square root of g, which is minus 1 squared, plus f, which is 2 squared, minus c. So it's minus, minus 8. So it'll be plus 8. Square root 1 plus 4 plus 8. Square root of 13. That's the radius. Square root of 13. And there are two answers there. And there. Find the center, find the radius. Okay, what about this question? Investigate. So we have to find out if the point P, which is 4, 1, is inside the circle. Okay, well, things that are really worth considering and finding about this circle would be the radius and the center. Because, for example, if here is the center, let's call it O, and here is P, if I find that the distance between O and P, if the distance O to P is greater than or, then P is outside. And or is the radius in this case. If I find that the distance between O and P, the distance OP, is equal to or the radius, then P is on the circle. And if I find that the distance between O and P is less than or O P, if I find that O P is less than or, then P is inside. the circle. So I really need to find the distance between O and P, O being the center, and I also need to find the radius. So I'm going x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to 0. The center is minus g minus f is the center, so that's my point O. I know that 2g is equal to minus 6 and 2f is equal to 4. g is equal to minus 3. Minus g is equal to 3. f is equal to 2. Minus f is equal to minus 2. So the center, O, is, what is it? It's 3 minus 2 and a radius. comes from g squared plus f squared minus c. What's c in this case? c is 4. c is 4. So or is equal to the square root minus 3 
squared plus 2 squared minus 4 9 plus 4 minus 4 square root of 9 is 3 so the radius is 3 what's the distance distance between O and P or OP the distance between two points come back to coordinate geometry line x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared where we're going to use 3 and minus 2 as our x1 y1 that's the center and my point p my point p is 4 1 4 1 4 1 and that's x2 y2 the distance op is 4 minus 3 squared plus 1 minus minus 2 plus 2 squared 1 squared plus 3 squared square root of 10 op is the square root of 10 as OP is greater than the radius, square root of 10, it's greater than 3, uh, P must lie outside the circle. P must lie outside the circle. If you ever run into a scenario like this where it says find the center of the circle, just take your time and go x squared plus y squared minus 8x plus 0y minus 8 is equal to 0. And then match it up again, x squared plus y squared minus, or plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to 0. So we know what our 2g is minus 8, our 2f is 0. And our c is minus 8. And similar in this scenario, just go x squared plus y squared plus 5x minus 6y minus 5 is equal to 0. And write out the formula directly below it. x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to 0. And don't worry if 2g is equal to 5 and then g is equal to 5 over 2, and then minus g is equal to minus 5 over 2. That's fine. We're allowed to have minuses. It's not the end of the world. And we're allowed to have fractions, so don't worry about that either. Now, this one is important. If you have a coefficient in front of your x squareds and y squareds, so first of all, we're missing a constant at the end. 4x plus 3y plus 0 is equal to 0. If we have coefficients in front of our x squared and our y squared, we want to divide everything by those because we want it as a single x squared and a single y squared. So divide everything by 2. Divide everything by 2. You're getting 3 over 2y plus 0 over 2, which is 0. And now proceed in the same manner. Now go x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to zero, and then follow in the same process as we did before. Similar enough, you might run into a scenario where there's no, there are x squareds and y squareds, but there's no x and no y. So let's look at this example. If you were to just think of this as x squared plus y squared plus zero x plus zero y minus nine is equal to zero, then we're doing the exact same thing we did before. x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to 0. We know the center is minus g minus f. We know that 2g is equal to 0. So that's going to mean minus g is going to be 0 as well. And 2f is equal to 0. So that minus f is equal to 0. So the center is 0, 0. And we know the radius is g squared plus f squared minus c. 
So you're getting 0 squared plus 0 squared plus 0 squared minus c, which would be minus minus 9, so it's plus 9. So you're getting the square root of 9, which is just 3, so the radius is 3. So quick little shorthand for these, if you have it in a scenario like this, it's center and same again, scenario like this, scenario like this, this is really all center 0, 0, 0, 0. And this guy here is R squared. So remember, this was R squared, so R would be 3, which is what we found. This is R squared, so R would be square root of 1, which would be 1. And this guy here, R squared is equal to 27, so R is equal to the square root of 27, which is 3 root 3. And similar to one that we already did, to make this into uh, x squared plus y squared, you just go and divide everything by 16. x squared plus y squared is equal to 49 over 16. Then you know it's going to be center 0, 0. And whoops, you'd know that this part here is or squared. So or squared is equal to 49 over 16 square root that or is equal to 7 over 4 and you're done not an awful lot more to it